Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant and we are back for some more Pillars of Eternity with the Triple Crown difficulty settings. So we're in the White March, we are in Long Watch Falls. In the previous episode I completed two fights that I was kind of fearing because they are very tough, which is the Lago Fed fight on this area right here and also a Lago Fed fight on this bridge right here. The Brood Mothers and their Cleansing Flames can be quite damaging and that's kind of what you know, what hit us here, and I was kind of afraid things were gonna go south. Thankfully, was not the case. My party and Mr. Piggy were able to be successful, and everybody else also leveled up. So, as is tradition, we are gonna start by doing the level ups. And I will say that <laughs> these level ups gave me a lot to think about. They were not easy at all. Um, I'm gonna start for, with it there. With that, I'm going to put some more points into Athletics, just because. But now we have an additional ability. Now, we've been over these abilities a bunch of times already, but the cool thing to take note here is I was really thinking about Sundering Blow, because this one you have two per encounter, and you hit a target, and the target will lose 8 damage reduction for 8 seconds, and you also deal 20% more melee damage on you know, your hit. Um, I really like this, I really wanted this, but then this one also showed up, which is triggered immunity. If the fighter is hit by damage that does at least 10% of his or her total endurance, he or she will gain immunity to that damage type for a short duration. So uh, don't pay attention to this, it says over here immune to slash damage, this is not true, uh, this is kind of just a, a bug or an example you are immune to whatever type of damage dealt 10% or more of your total endurance. So, um, the real consideration here, like I said, is between Sundering Blow and Triggered Immunity. I think Eder is already very tanky. I don't really see him going down easily in fights. So I was looking into Sundering Blow to have some more offensive power. But at the same time, we are playing in Iron Man. And even though he doesn't really take a lot of damage in most fights, there are a couple of specific fights which can end the run quite quickly. And for example, dragons or some other kind of boss type enemies that deal a lot of burst damage, this can be a cool ability to have at hand. It's also passive, you don't need to cast anything, it will just trigger, as the name, in <laughs> as the name says, trigger the immunity. So I think for the sake of keeping this run going and not end in a premature, unfortunate death, I'm gonna go with Triggered Immunity for extra defenses. It might be overkill, this might have just been better, but like I said, I wanna keep the videos going. Uh, we're gonna go with the safer option here. That's level up done. I like that the skill is an armadillo <laughs> image. As for Mr. Kana, uh, don't really have anything to put over here, but we do get a level 5 phrase. So, for these phrases we have Mercy and Kindness followed wherever she walked, and this one will give a friendly aura of plus 100% healing received, which is quite cool. And the other one is With all your strength slay the beast. The chanter increases allies' accuracy and damage against all enemies of the beast type. So plus 20 accuracy against beasts and plus 30% damage against beasts. Now, typically you would look at these two and you would say, eh, it's versus beasts, who cares about this? <clears throat> I don't want it. Uh, and this one is just overall a better skill. But at the same time, this is something that lasts seven, or it's, the duration of this chant, of this phrase is seven seconds, which takes a very long time right and i think it's higher with each level of the phrase so it takes a long time for him to to chant this phrase so it's not really something that i want to have on um you know every fight i want him to have shorter phrases i want to use his is um, uh, what's the name is evocations or something like that so this would be something that i used in specific fights and at the same time this one <coughs> You might think beasts, who cares about beasts, but dragons are beasts. 
and there's still at least a couple of dragons we have to fight against and dragons are usually uh, you know a, a foe to fear so given that out of these two i would i would only use them in very specific situations i'm gonna go with slay the beast because i already know where and when i want to use this and i know it's going to be effective while this one you know you might not take damage and this didn't do anything so you just wasted seven seconds doing effectively nothing so yeah i'm gonna go with this one here and that's the only choice we have to make so his level up is done his was kind of easy for mr aloth i was kind of surprised by this i didn't actually remember what was going to happen on this level up i'm going to give him some more athletics and now we have access to level 8 spells so i'm going to go over them one by one explain them and then i'm just going to tell you which i'm going to choose we have k the bald's black bow the wizard summons a frightful bow that does corrode damage to enemies and leaves them terrified each bolt of energy the wizard fires bounces to one additional target. So this is actually a very cool skill. Uh, and it lasts 70 seconds. It's a very long time. The bow itself is a war bow. Uh, 29 to 44 corrode damage, terrify for 4 seconds. The same thing on the jump and it is superb. So it's, a, it's an overall very good weapon. Corrode damage is not often resisted so it's one of the best things you can have in terms of damage types. We're gonna go for the next one, which is Kalakot's Freezing Rake. A ghostly skeletal hand rakes across the area, doing freeze damage to enemies in the area, leaving them weakened and hobbled. I, I might just, might as well just say this. I won't be picking Black Bow, because my damage type or my, my damage spell of choice is gonna be the Minor Blight. Because of all of the AoE, the way it interacts with Blast, I think that for my build it's just overall the best choice. So Black Bow will not be chosen here. The Freezing Rake, so as I was reading, uh, will deal 69 to 86 freeze damage and I believe this hits an area. Yeah, it's, it's length, it's like a wall of 8.7 meters, so it does hit a fairly um, wide area. And not only does it deal damage, it will also, if successful, weaken and hobble the targets. It's not bad. Still not going to be the one I'm going to be choosing. We have Lengrat's Superior Elemental Bulwark. This one is actually pretty cool. It's a very defensive spell. The wizard is protected by elemental shields that guard him or her against burn, corrode, freeze and shock damage until they are overwhelmed or the duration expires. So every elemental damage type you're going to be protected against. And it will protect against 100 points of each of these elemental types for 46.5 seconds. So a very good duration, a very good shield, but again, it's very, very specific. In most fights, you're not even taking elemental damage. You're mostly taking physical damage. But in any case, still, it's a, it's a cool spell. You also have Major Grimoire Imprint, allows the wizard to temporarily borrow druid, priest or wizard spells of 7th level or lower. For a short duration the wizard can cast the stolen spells freely. So steals 3 spells along the or lower for 93 seconds, so it's a very long duration. It targets Fortitude, which is the best type to, to target against spellcasters, this is usually their weakest uh, stat. But if I'm reading this right, or if I'm interpreting this right, it's a random spell. You're not guaranteed, you're not guaranteed to get a 7th level spell or a level 6. You can get 3 level 1 spells or 1 level 1, 2 level 2 spells. You can spam them, from what I'm reading here, you can cast them freely. But if you get really nice spells, it's going to be really good. If you get really crappy spells, you're not even going to use them. So I don't like RNG based um, effects, so this one is something that I won't be taking. Then we also have Minoleta's Piercing Sigil. The wizard invokes the sigil of the famed Velen wizard Minoleta. When he or she is struck in melee, the sigil retaliates with pierce damage, pushing the target back and leaving them stunned. So again, a very very cool defensive spell. Characters hitting the, the caster, lasts for 31 seconds, will take 21 to 29 pierce damage, they will be pushed away for 3 meters, 
and they will also be stunned for 2.3 seconds. Again, it's the kind of thing that's cool to have, but I would mostly see this on like a, a fighter mage type of wizard. Not really what I'm going for with Aloth, which is kind of like a pure spellcaster, aside from the nuking with the minor blights. So again, not going to be taking this one. So <laughs> with that, you know which ones I'm going to take, which are the last two. And the first one is the Wall of Many Colors. This summons a scintillating wall of varied colors that inflicts varied damage and afflictions on enemies passing through it. So, uh, typical wall effect, lasts for 12 seconds, and it does a variety of things. It can either cause burden damage on your target, or corrode, or shock, or raw, these are the types of damage, but it can also petrify, dominate, or paralyze. And I believe that these effects will tick every time that either a second passes or that enemies pass through it or pass back away from it. So something that I imagine being cool with this is something like a pool of Eora, where it kind of knocks enemies around or if it there also pushes them back and they have to run through the wall again. Or, you know, just if you have a bunch of enemies, like we saw in this, in this last episode, where you have a lot of enemies coming through, even if this doesn't petrify everybody, it can still help out by, I don't know, paralyzing one or two, dominating another, or just damaging them as they come through. So, out of all of the things we have here, this one I think is the one I like the most, even though it also has some RNG to it. And finally, we have the Wilting Wind. A parching wind blows across the battlefield, inflicting raw damage on anyone in the area and leaving them weakened. So this one here deals 58 to 69 raw damage, and it weakens them for 18.6 seconds. The radius is 7 meters, um, 7 meter radius. Now, I'm not particularly in love with this spell either. I think the level 5, um, what's the name, the, the, the cloud that deals raw damage is probably better, because this is called wind, I was kind of thinking of a cloud effect, but I don't think it actually stays in place, it's just a, a one-time effect, and it's also slow. But, I mean, looking over what we have over here, there's not really anything else that, that strikes me as particularly useful, with the exception maybe of the Freezing Rake. But, I mean, choosing between a, a wall type of effect that deals freeze damage or choosing uh, a circle wide effect that deals raw damage, I think I'm gonna go for the raw damage here. <laughs> I think it's better. Uh, it probably sucks, I will have to try it out, I don't honestly remember it that well, <laughs> so we're gonna see. And finally we have Spell Mastery, and this is where this level up becomes very interesting. Because for the level 4 spells, uh, we have a bunch of cool spells, but we have one that's, you know, particularly useful. The Ninagot's Shadow Flame, being one per encounter, means I can effectively spam this well, not spam it, but I can use it every single encounter without having to worry about, you know, <laughs> wasting my level 4 spells. Uh, there's a couple here that I would like to have per encounter. Well, I would like to have all of them per encounter, but that's not possible. Uh, I like the Pool of Iora, although that one, that one would be more for fun than anything else. Uh, I also like the Death Ray. I still haven't used this. I, sh I really should. But the range is kind of short, which annoys me a little bit. I'm gonna have to try it out. Uh, but yeah, the, the no-brainer choice here, at least for me, is gonna be Shadow Flame. An AoE freeze damage that paralyzes everybody for 9 seconds. I mean, what is there to think about? <laughs> we'll just go with this one. So, that's my level up for Mr. Aloth. A lot to talk about because of the spells. The Grieving Mother. We're not going to put any points into our skills, I'm waiting for some more athletics. And we have level 8 powers. So this one is also quite easy, there's two powers to choose from, and there's only uh, and we can choose two of them. The first one is going to be Reaping Knives. 
The Cypher uses an ally soul to create blades of pure energy that emerge from both hands. The blades do raw damage and generate focus for the Cypher who created them. It requires 80 focus, so that's quite a bit. The range is 2 meters, I don't really know what this means. Um... Oh, wait. Oh, I summon, I summon weapons on a target ally, not on myself. Interesting. I think when it says over here universal, I think that any kind of accuracy bonus counts for this weapon. Although I'm not entirely sure. They deal raw damage and grants 30% of damage delta's focus to the caster. Hmm. Okay, I, actually, I, I thought the Grieving Mother would wield them. This can be cool. If, let's say, Eder is tanking perfectly and Kana isn't doing much, I can just give Kana both knives and just send them in. And hope he doesn't die. <laughs> um, yeah, but still. And then we have Defensive Mind Web, which is like one of the best spells in the entire game. By linking his or her mind with those of nearby allies, the caster creates a series of defensive links between them. All allies in the mind web use the best defense of anyone in the web. So you have an aura of 3 meters, 80 focus as well, but for 48 seconds, everybody that got hit by this is going to use the best defense out of everybody in the group. I think it also counts for deflection, although I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> but this is massive. So very happy about this upgrade right here. Uh, my character. Uh, I think I'm just going to start putting some points into athletics. I don't really need any more mechanics, I don't believe. Or do I? <laughs> it's always a question. Um, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to try and save it up to see if I can reach at least level 13 in mechanics. And everything else is going to go for athletics after that. So... We have a new ability to choose. The, the real choices here are going to be between Finishing Blow, which is the one I think I'm going to take. And this has the same logic as the choice for Eder. It's per rest, and I don't like per rest abilities. Uh, so let's just get that out of the way. But it deals a massive amount of damage. So if you are facing a tougher opponent, like a boss, or somebody that's really annoying, you can just toss these out and finish them off, which can be very helpful against certain enemies, like for example the dragons we talked about before. Uh, the other choice... Oh, and the other choice really here was Shadow Stamp, which you can get some range damage for 8.4 seconds. I don't even know how this works, to be honest. And then we also have this new one, which is Feign Death. The rogue collapses to the ground and pretends to be out of a fight, regaining endurance and biding his or her time until the moment is right to return to battle. When the rogue stands up, he or she becomes invisible for a short period of time. So, the, the, the good part about this spell, the allure about this spell, is that it is per encounter, and it's also instant. It will make my rogue invisible immune to engagement, untargetable, and it will also break engagements for 8.4 seconds. I will also gain some endurance, uh, become untargetable for 14 seconds, this is kind of weird. Prone for 14 seconds, and I have a damage shield for 14 seconds. So, I don't think I've ever played with this, but what I'm thinking is, if you activate this, you get prone, and you have a damage shield, and if you get up again, you're going to be invisible for uh, a little bit of time. It looks cool, um, but I think I would only choose this if I didn't have Finishing Blow as a choice, because Feign Death, I already have Shadowing Beyond, which I think I've activated once in the entire game. So another type of dodge spell I don't think I need anymore. So I'm going to go for the finishing blow here for the tougher fights. That's my level up done. But yeah, all of these choices are, are very nuanced. You can either go for one or the other. It's not easy for me to choose between them. And finally, we have Mr. Durance. I'm going to give him an extra point in lore so he can cast level uh, 5. 
scrolls, I believe. Um, and... Ah, yes. We have Spell Mastery level 4, which is quite cool. Uh, there's a bunch of useful spells here, but I, again, the one that's always useful is going to be Devotions for the Faithful. Much like what I chose for level 1 and level 2, uh, true, <laughs> for level 1 and level 2, which are just, you know, uh, sorry, 1 and 3, which are just buffs to my entire part that I can always use, this one serves the same purpose. So we've discussed it before, but everybody in the area receives 4 might, 20 accuracy, and it lasts for 45 seconds, and it also serves as a debuff for any enemy in the area. So that's my choice. And we also get level 8 spells. So let's see what we have. We have the Hand of Wheel and Woe. The range is 5 meters, which is very short. <clears throat> it lasts for 10 seconds. And it's going to... Let me check. Well, I should read this first. I don't know why some spells have the description on the bottom and others on the top, but whatever. The priest calls forth a beam of light that heals allies and burns enemies caught in the ray. Okay, so it's, it's just a, a ray, like we have other effects of the sort. It's going to damage the enemies, and it's also going to heal my allies every second that it ticks. It can be cool, but the damage and the heal are kind of pitiful. Secondly, we have Symbol of Magran. So this one emblazons the ground with the Symbol of Magran, periodically causing burn damage to enemies in the area and leaving them blinded. <clears throat> You know, you know what's kind of sad about this? Is that this is almost a priest version of Chill Fog. <laughs> and Chill Fog is a level 1 wizard spell. The advantage here, naturally, is that this one lasts for a lot longer. It lasts for 30 seconds. <clears throat> it's, I believe, a wider radius. And it only targets your opponents. But the range, man, the range is horrible. <laughs> but, yeah. And finally, we have Watchful Guardian. The priest's faith becomes a wellspring of indom indomitability for his or her allies. When an affected ally is knocked unconscious in battle, he or she will immediately be revived and have some endurance healed. I don't know what to say, man. I don't know what to say. I think level 8 spells for the priests are terrible. I think it also depends on the deity. Uh, because Durance is a priest of Magran, there's probably other priests or other deities that have much better effects, I hope. And I'm not sure if these two are also tied to the deity. But out of all of these, I think only the Hand of Will and Woe is kind of useful and again the range is horrible. If this here was a range of 10 meters, for example, this would be useful. But like this, it's really not. But the real, the real bonus of the level up is right here. Devotions for the Faithful once per encounter. So, we're done with the level up. It took a while, I'm sorry about that. But I had to explain all of our choices. What is it? Of course. Let us explore what remains of this area. There's not an ice troll over there. How did I not kill you before? Okay, let's take care of this guy. And then I think I'm going to rest. Yes. I can, I can, <laughs> I can still fight if it's not a very large fight. Don't really want to push it. Wait, you guys were... Hmm. Well, this fight's gonna start. I'm kind of afraid that this is a, is a bounty. And I've already messed up. He was last spotted setting up camp in the wilds around Longwatch Falls. No, so it shouldn't be this. Maybe these just spawn after you kill the bounty? Because there was a bounty in this area. <clears throat> okay, so I, I I don't expect trouble. Okay, let, let, let's see what happens here. It's just a bunch of ice trolls. Okay, so you guys can stay where you are. I'm gonna start shooting stuff. Um, 
We're gonna have more buffs than usual, yay! So one buff, two buff, three buff, D buff, yeah. <laughs> and you are gonna buff with Merciless Gaze. My lady is gonna start shooting, you are gonna start shooting that thing. We have Finishing Blow, cool. Uh, why are you stopping? Just cast that and fight. Okay. Aloth can now toss out his Shadow Flame because it's per encounter. 435 meter, I think. If I target this, it doesn't hit it there. God willing. Oh my god! <laughs> I paused at the wrong time. Okay. Oh god, please, game, stop it. Oh, I didn't paralyze him. It looked like I had paralyzed him, but no, I paralyzed everything else. God, I'm a pro at these... At these areas. Or I just missed. No, I didn't. I really didn't hit it there. Nice. Okay. So, we have paralyzed every single thing. For, for a long time. Now, these guys are very resilient. Still. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna get our chill fog. Should I even bother with chill fog? Are you guys immune to cold? Trolls. Ice troll. No, they are just resilient. Yeah, so go for the chill fog for the blind effect. I think it's worth it. Put it there. The grieving mother can toss out an amplified wave. Actually, no, because the Amplified Wave does not... Um, crush damage doesn't work on them. Just keep shooting. Let's kill that. Okay, Chill Fog is out. Uh, I mean, you're gonna off-tank this just because it's going for Aloth. So back up. Now, we're gonna cast Defensive Mind Web to also see how this works. And just... Toss out some books. Yeah. Seems fine to me. Where are you going, bitch? Okay, he's going for Kana. We have the mind web. So let me see. If I do this... Oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so 120 deflection. For my entire backline. And it could have been more if I had it there a little... Oh my lord. Wait, does this work with vigorous defense? That could be interesting. Hmm. Okay. Accept uh, this guy. I want to try out the, the mind knives or mind blades or whatever it's called. This guy is going around a bit much. Back up. Shoot. Okay, you can cast a repulsing seal over there. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much all you're gonna do. So, let me see how bad this is, the reaping knives. I can actually, yeah, I can target Kana. Or I can target Durance. Yeah, go for Durance. <laughs> Let's see what he does. They're not prone. Durance, go fight. Ooh. Well, he's dealing good damage, man. Oh my, he's, oh my, this is much better than I thought. And if I can disable, oh my lord. He's just getting me tons of focus. Yeah, buddy! Okay, well, shoot there, and shoot there, and shoot there. Oops, there. You... You two hit here. Dude, Durance? Oh my lord. Wait. You have 85 accuracy. That's not... That's not even bad at all. And with Mind Web, I don't even lose anything for not having my shield. This is perfect. And it la... Oh, uh, 
Oh, it lasts a long time, 40 seconds or 50 seconds. And Mind Web lasts a long time as well. Oh yeah, we have killer durants now in the party. Look at that! <laughs> Lovely. And I think I can even cast on multiple characters. I could put it on I'll Durant, I could put I it on fight. Kana, and even it there if I need to. Very cool. Okay, what else we have? We have this entire northern section to discover, as well as this lower section over here. What's this? Dwarven Watch. Have I been here before? Oh, I cannot go there. Okay. So, let's explore. This looks like a slope, which I love. Where does this lead? A waterfall? Oh... Damn, I don't remember which cave is, is which. Hmm. Mm. We're gonna rest just in case something horrible happens. Uh, let me just see here. I think fish people are wilders, right? Lago fat wilder. So yeah, rest wilder uh, damage reduction. Okay, there we go. It's just in case this cave isn't what I think it is. But I'm gonna have to be extremely careful. No, 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 well. no, 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 I think I know what this is. I thought this cave was the one from the other place. Yeah, this looks familiar in a very terrifying way. <laughs> I think there's gonna be something quite large over here. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. Th this, this is the cave that I'm dreading, not the other one. My spider senses were tingling the other day, but it was for the wrong cave. Yeah, screw that. Not gonna go here. Hey. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> not today. We shall return in the future, but not right now. All right, and then. speaking of which, Follow I should... I should set up my D over here with the, I probably this one and then this one fortitude and will let me just think about this reload speed would also be nice naturally hmm Maybe just like, maybe just like this, or I can t take away the burn and just do this. Also not bad, this one. Although this lingers for this entire time right here. So let me, let me think. So what if I do this? And then, and then this, and then this. Okay, this is gonna be my anti-dragon setup. Okay. And right now I'm with this one, which is Fire Lash, plus Will, plus Reload Speed. Okay. Hey. Okay, so let's get out of here. We're not gonna go there yet. 
I'll see what I can find. A true flame barbarian. Okay, let's be careful with this. Disciple. Okay, so this is the <clears throat> this is the bounty. Do I have yes. line of sight? Of course. Adragon. Eh, bitches. Okay, so no line of sight. Wait, 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 careful, there is line of sight. Uh, from this point onward. Hey. So if I have my people here, yes. they should not be able to shoot me from below. I think. Hey. Okay. Following your lead. So, we're gonna do hey. this bounty. by revealing ourselves and then pulling them all over here to this choke point. There's a lot of enemies here. Yes. I want to check something again, sorry. Uh, this is an Adragon. And other guns are Delam guns. Which can cast Petrify and Domer. So these are, these are the, the, the tough ones. Okay. Hey. So, let's breathe, let's All right, then. pull it there a little bit back, reveal him. Okay, so they're coming in. As usual, I forgot my, my repulsing seal, but whatever. I'm going to start buffing. And once they start coming in, I'm going to protect ourselves from petrification and domination. There is immune to domination anyway, <clears throat> so he's better protected. We're going to get this and then that. Okay. So actually going to come over here. Okay. He's in a good position here. Buff with this. Now the other gun is coming, so screw that. I'm going to buff with... Prayer against imprisonment. And then a prayer against treachery. And then I'm going to continue my buffs as normally. Okay. So. You are almost buffed. Okay. Yes, you are. So I'm going to start setting up my killing ground over here with, with my friend Aloth. And I guess I can use level 8 spells kind of to check them out as well. I'm going to put a wall of many colors over here, so that when they start coming in, they're going to get the effects that we discussed before. If there is fine, they are... Oh, she's summoning, which is good. Let's slow this down. No, stand back. Oh, they cast something weird. Okay, she started getting, I believe, a domination. Let me make sure I'm not crazy. I am immune to confused and dominated, so don't care about her. My prayer should be coming out soon. My rogue. Can you see these people even? You can see her. The druid and oh there's several other guns actually. Let's I'm actually gonna sap this bitch because he's tossing out crowns of the faithful. Oh no shit. Okay, and you can shoot. And you can start tanking. Let's get vigorous defense. I have my wall of many colors. So after that, I think I'm going to go for a wilting wind. The range is kind of large, but I want them to get over here first. Okay, so just shoot this one for now. Or actually, sorry. Oh, he... <laughs> So, perfect. This guy and this lady both got petrified by the Wall of Many Colors, which is just amazing. I'm gonna toss out a Chill Fog over there. Kana can start shooting, everybody can start shooting. Focus on him. Okay, my stun went for the Priest, interrupted the... Um, interrupted the... Crowns for the Faithful. Oh, I cannot see her. Okay. Let me stun this bitch then. 
You are shooting it there, which is what I want. Okay. This guy got dominated. Okay. He's hitting his own friend. Chill Fog just went out. So let's go and check out Wilting Wind. The radius is very large, so I expect it to hit everything over here, but hopefully not there. Protected, that guy died. The Grieving Mother now has 102 focus points. Let me see if I can get a nice mind web here. He still has vigorous defense, so for 10 seconds we're gonna have amazing defenses. Okay, defensive mind web, let's go. Dominated. Yeah, man, the wall of many colors is very. Why did he stop? Cast this. Shoot that. Grieving Mother. Oh, she did cast it, but there was no animation. Okay, so let's see. This guy has these defenses. <laughs> Perfection. Okay, let's get Phantom Foes on that guy. And then just nuke. Oh, baby, that was a lot more damage than I thought. Whoa. 100 raw damage. Oh, it was it's a crit? My dude. That's very good. Okay, well, we killed the other gun right there. And we're gonna paralyze everybody in the area, because why not? I did not hit it there. Perfect. Okay, so I, I do have a, a somewhat good grasp on the radiuses. Okay, so Phantom Foes, everybody got paralyzed by Nina God's Shadow Flame. And we're just cleaning up here. Just shoot them. I, I still, I even, <laughs> I haven't even finished the boss team. And everything is going down. Okay, let's debuff them and then get some accuracy buffs. Okay. Dead. Shoot that. <laughs> I love it, man. But yeah, you can see how the wall of many fl uh, many colors is very useful because when you start disabling people near a choke point, they will clog up the space for the other enemies. So it works out very well. Uh, you stand where you are. You three. Shoot that. Well. Okay. So much dead, dead. And these are both druids, which I don't particularly like. But we're going in. Charge! That's not very helpful. Come on there. Knock him down. Down he goes. We can take off slow mode. Good kill. Knock this one down. Perfect. This one is a bit tankier. Uh, let's paralyze him. No, no, no. No stunning storm for you, my friend. Some more. But yeah, thi this spell does not suck. It does a lot of damage. <laughs> okay, we leveled up Saint Widwin's Redeemer. Uh, so, oh, now it grants holy power, three per rest. Okay, interesting. And the level up is kill 10 vessels or kill 50 enemies. So... This sword is well made but modest in design. The lone flourish is a feather pattern radiating from the hilt and even this has been crafted with exquisite care. Each barb and shaft is a smooth straight line between beneath your fingers. Power and warmth radiate from this blade. Yidwen was a paladin and member of the Kind Wayfarers during the War of Black Trees. She was famous for escorting colonists and farmers through the Deerwood and protecting them from Glenfather and warbands. Though a skilled warrior, she avoided the Glenfadans when possible, rather than fight them. However, tensions and tempers rose, and one day she found herself guiding a family of farmers from their ruined homestead. 
While she attempted to wait out the prowling raiders, one of her charges rushed into the fray. Widwen uh, was forced to hold off the Glenfadens while the rest of the farmers fled. She died, outnumbered and surrounded, and it was said that even the raider who struck the killing blow wept for her. Pretty cool. So a, a good aligned weapon, we could say. Let's pick up our bounty that doesn't have anything special. Yep, nothing special over here. Take that. A blade in the dark. They who woke the stars completed. Ah, so we completed our quest. Though backed by the money and spies of two Valin dukes, Pelagina had difficulty cracking the Glenfaden astronomer's code. Many of the Glenfadens who initially appeared helpful turned out to be saboteurs who believed that outsiders could not be trusted with Glenfaden secrets. A series of ambushes and difficult chases through Erglanfath eventually brought Pelagina face to face with the great-great-granddaughter of one of the Orlan astronomers who predicted the lover's tide. She threatened to destroy the key to translating the cipher, but Pelagina was able to negotiate a limited translation of the key astronomical information. In the end, the Valin Dukes were a bit disappointed as they had hoped to learn additional secrets of Glenfather and astronomy. However, even the information Pelagina recovered was fascinating to Valin astronomers. And we gained the Constellated Cloak that grants dimensional shift once per rest. Eh, really, it's nothing special, man. This dazzling cloak was a gift from two Valin Dukes, a reward for your help in recovering lost Glenfather and astronomical knowledge. Looking at the cloak from different angles produces a variety of shimmering colors and creates the illusion that you are gazing into an impossibly deep expanse of space. Yeah. It's nothing really that special, honestly. I see a trap. Where there's a pick, there's a way. Okay, oh, level 12, good. I'll see it done. It's finished. You can pick it. Really? That was it? Hey. <laughs> Underwhelming. Let's go up here. Light, flame, and sound. We keep to ourselves. Well, if we start hearing banshees, it's a sign to be careful. That's a wraith. I don't think I've fought a wraith yet. But I'm also not sure if I want to place myself in this slope because it can be a little bit awkward when the fight starts. Okay, well, let's find out what raids do. Two Shengulas. Hey. Okay, so... Let's hope this Wraith doesn't do anything spectacular. We're gonna buff up. I'm gonna protect myself against paralyzation because I know that that's something they do. And... Just gonna have Mr. Eder over here ready to tank. Yes. Let's slow this down. Oh no, swap, swap weapons, dude. Okay. These are spirits, not vessels. Okay, so. There goes my sap. Oh, it's very weak. Stunned for seven seconds already, it's injured. Okay, so Aloth has finished his buff. It's very simple buff. <clears throat> We're gonna go for the amazing. Shadow Flame, like here, it shouldn't hit you there, but let's back up a bit anyway. The Wraith's dead. Explosive Death. Oh, it hits Kana, it hits the Grieving Mother, it has a large radius. Misses Aloth, misses it there. It hits her friends. Okay. So let's focus on the one with the least duration on the paralyzation. Uh, we can just shoot this one, yep. You shoot that one. I guess you can go tank. Because why not? And you are gonna debuff and then start buffing. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of it. We're gonna toss out some books. Yeah. Oh. They stun. I keep forgetting that. 
Ah, oh, you sons of bitches. Shoot that, shoot that. Back up, back up. I don't want to be in range of the Spectres. Uh, you two shoot that. Or this, sorry. Okay, good. They, the range on that. Okay, you know what? Charge! Okay, you guys go fight that. Uh, actually, you shoot this one. The Grieving Mother will toss out an amplified wave over there. No, not you. Oh my god. Okay, so they also blow up and when they do... They also kill their friends, which also blow up. Keeping an eye out. So yeah, we gotta be careful. I still hear wailing. You trace fading out. Oh, sorry, you trace fading outline and shapes in these panels. It looks like they were once a sequence of reliefs, but the images have worn away. I like that. Although, wait, uh, oh. Although, with the sound of the the Banshee stuff, I'm kind of afraid of this. These panels have been worn smooth. In one, you can just detect the shape of a sword, and in another, the stocky body of a dwarf. I want to check if this is trapped. Hey. It's not. Hey. Behind a frigid curtain of water is an alcove, its walls flecked with ice. In the middle you see a rough stone pedestal, also glazed with ice from the falls. A cruciform hilt and a tapered blade protrude from the pedestal. Judging from the size of the hilt and the apparent length of the blade, you infer that it is an estoc. Another estoc, okay. Examine the area. The alcove and the stone pedestal are little more than dilap dilapidated ruins. Ice price cracks in the stone and coats the slick floor. The estoc, what little of it you can see, appears to be in better condition. It seems odd that anyone would leave it here. However, as you get close to it, you hear what sound like the screams and shouts of tormented souls. Mm. There's gonna be enemies spawning, aren't they? Move in to pull the weapon from the stone. Who will go? Uh, I want to send myself because I think I'm the mightiest one of them all. But at the same time, if people spawn around me, I have shadowing beyond. Okay, let, let, let me... I'll go. Grab the weapon and pull it out. You cross under the falls, gasping as the water douses you. Your breaths echo in the small chamber. As you approach the pedestal, you see the reflection of falling water running along the blade. You grip the hilt. The hate, fear and violence of a dozen mad gibbering voices fills your mind. You shudder through a wave of mental pain, struggling to hold the voices back. Grunts and cries of agony ring through the tiny space. Screw it, keep holding on. You maintain a tight grip on the sword, your arms shaking with effort. Eventually, you regain a measure of focus despite the clamoring voices. Yet, just as your breathing steadies and the, and the cacophony subsides, something pulls your arms forward. It suddenly feels as if you're holding a heavy and painful burden. You could probably pull the s -talk free, but it will be taxing without careful effort. Okay. Inspect the blade. The blade is of a fine, sturdy steel. Peering closer, you see part of a poem written along the blade. Tis a traitor's fate to sleep and never rest, whilst knowledge of his deeds stay lodged within his breast. But earnest peace heals the sorrowful man, and worthy action stayed the executioner's hand. Yeah, that's a cool poem. Uh, I'm not sure if this is kind of because I have high dexterity that I can kind of wiggle it loose. With a few skilled and precise movements, you manage to jostle the blade. The hilt pops up a few inches, but the s is still tightly wedged in the stone. 
Well, now we're going to use our might, draw the S-Talk from the stone. After working at the S-Talk, you're able to pull it free without too much difficulty. Oh god. Yet, when you try to release the S-Talk, it remains stuck in your hand. You feel something within the weapon grasping at your soul and binding to it. When you look at the blade, you see new writing glowing from the metal. Oh, come on. Did I... Wait, this is this is a problem. Bound to cordant cannot be unequipped. It's fine. It has a 10% chance to cast paralyze on a hit or critical hit, which is cool. Decipher the first verse of the poem is the level up. This Estoc has a smooth, sturdy blade that tapers to a needle sharp point. The groans of a dozen tortured souls ring from the metal, binding the weapon to the hand of its wielder for so long as the curse persists. A few verses are etched along the blade. It is a traitor's fate to sleep and never rest, whilst knowledge of his deeds stay lodged in his breast. But earnest penance heals a sorrowful man, and worthy actions stay the executioner's hand. We'd seen this before. A new verse appeared when the blade was drawn from its pedestal. It reads, Seek the whirling agent made of copper, other stone. Awaken first your essence, so that you may atone. What? Oh my oh god, my man. God. What is it? Okay, so now I'm screwed, right? I cannot swap my weapon. <laughs> I only have the s talk. Okay, at least Borosane is here. I was getting worried. Um... Well... Uh, I'm kind of guessing that, uh, because I don't remember this weapon, I'm kind of guessing that I have to decipher the verses of the poem in order to get myself freed of this. I still have some decent... Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm never going to put myself in melee. So I'm going to have to play without my rogue until I find a way to decipher this. Seek the whirling agent made of copper, other stone... Awaken first your essence so that you may atone. Is this the statue in Cadnula? Not sure. Well, um, <coughs> well, I learned something new. Uh, do not pull out this weapon unless you are sure of, <laughs> of, of, you know, having somebody stuck with it for a while. Uh, but I, I guess it's something different. It is interesting. Do I have a quest for this? Or it's not a quest? Yeah, no, it's, it's not a quest. Okay, well, in any case, uh, I can conclude the Thermal Pearl. I can conclude the bounty for the Disciples of the True Flame. Oh, I can also conclude the Sacred Instruments. I forgot about this. So three quests I can complete. And I also okay. need to find a way to free myself of this s talk Because even though it looks like a cool weapon, and it is a cool weapon, because of the, the chance to paralyze on hit or critical hit, uh, I don't want my rogue to have it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I guess the next episode we're going to have to decipher this. And I will try not to spoil myself and try to look for the answers without you know, looking up the solution. Um, but, yeah, I'm gonna have to get rid of this. So, we're gonna end this episode here, my friends. As always, I hope you guys are enjoying the journey through the White March in Pillars of Eternity. Thank you so much for being here in the channel with me for it. Uh, yeah, I'm also fatigued. <laughs> in any case, if you guys have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. There's videos coming out every single day. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.